Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a script that searches for comps and footage inside of multiple After Effects projects. Now this is sort of equivalent to a search and solution if you have Visual Studio Code or some other more complicated editing system. And essentially we can look through as many projects as we want and find all of the compositions or other items we select. So in my case, I'm going to be using the videos folder of this to gather all of my projects and it's going to search through here and grab all of my After Effects projects, open them up, find all of the compositions, and find all of the footage. So if I go ahead and run it, you can see it's going to be opening up a bunch of compositions and a bunch of projects here. And at the end, it's going to first tell me all of my comp names that I've found and then all of the footage names from all of the projects is looked at. So essentially with this project, we're gonna be uh, gathering all of our projects that we want with a given folder or any custom way you want. And then we're going to be essentially going through all of the items in each of those projects, checking if it's a composition or checking if it's footage. And then we're just gonna store all of the names as we go through it. And before we get started, just wanted to remind you down below to hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe and bell icon to be notified of when new videos are coming out and of course make sure you join us on the discord where you can talk about scripting extensions plugins and now we have an expression section for those who are more expression savvy and the code for this project will be in the description in the github link where you can follow us there as well as on instagram too so let's go ahead and get started and create a new javascript file and get started writing this script the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, basically get uh, our list of projects so i'm going to create a variable called projects and then this is going to be equal to a custom function we're going to set up called get all projects. And we're going to set our projects equal to a folder object dot get files. So what we're going to do is give it a path somewhere like our videos, or I could even use this AEPs folder full of After Effects projects. And we're going to get all of the files within any folder we want. So inside of these quotes, I'll just say the general path to my videos and the folder called AEPs. So we're gonna look at the AEPs folder and get all of the files inside of it. But one thing you might notice is if we just get all of the files, we're also gonna get these folders. And if we were saying the videos folder, I would get all of these other files as well if I grabbed all of the files within it. So what I'm actually gonna do is create a custom function called get all projects. And we're gonna use a folder as our input. And instead what we're gonna do is just use our folder here the same folder we wanted to use before, but instead we're gonna send it to this get all projects function. So I'll say get all projects and put our folder object within that. So now when we go inside the get all projects function, it's gonna be bringing in whatever folder we give it here. We could give it just our videos folder, but in this case, I'm gonna make it a little more specific. So now inside of here, we're just gonna create a variable called items and we'll set this equal to our folder .get files. And just like before, remember, this is going to give us a list of all of the files, regardless of their extension or type. So now what we're going to do is actually loop through all the items and basically filter any ones out that are not an After Effects project. So I'll say for var i is equal to zero, starting at the beginning of our items array. And then while i is less than our items.length, increment i by one, and this will loop through all of those files that we just got. Then we're gonna have a single check and we're gonna check if our items i dot name and what we wanna do is slice out the AEP in the name. The reason we don't wanna just check if it has AEP in the name is because there are other types of files that can be created with AEP in the extension. Previously when I had been testing this, uh, I had run into issues where it had log files, which were aep.log. So what we're gonna do instead is just cut out the file extension of those three uh, .aep letters. So we're gonna say if items.name.slice, we're gonna slice the name, and we're gonna slice it from the length of itself, so item.name.length minus four, all the way to the very end of the string, which is items dot name link. So if you take this piece of footage, for example, what we're going to do is slice the entire name by the length minus four. So one, two, three, four, and then slice from there to the very end, which is going to give us the extension itself. And we're going to check if this entire slice is equal to dot AEP. And if that's the case, we know it's a project. So let's create a variable or an array to store all of our projects. 
and we'll just say AEPs is equal to an empty array. And then every time we find one, we're gonna push it and we're gonna push items I. And of course, these are not project items, these are file items on our system. And now at the very end, we're going to want to return all of our projects, or our AEPs in this case. And now what I'm gonna do is alert our items before we filter it. And then I'm going to alert our AEPs, which are essentially our filtered items. So if I go ahead and change my folder here to just my videos and run this, we can go ahead and see that we're gonna get all these different file types first because we're just getting all of our items. So we have a WAV file, an MP4, some AEPs, some JavaScript files, etc. But now after we filter it, you can see we're gonna be left with just our After Effects projects, everything ending in .aep. So that's how we're going to filter out all of the AEP files. You could use the same exact technique to filter for any other file type, whether it be MP4 or whatever, you could get those specific items yourself. So we'll get rid of these alerts. And now we know that our projects variable is full of all of the AEP files in any given folder we give it. So that function's working fine. Now what we need to do is do a for loop, run through all of these projects, and anytime we find a composition or footage, or in your case, whatever piece of information or item you want, we're going to store the name of that. So I'm gonna create a variable called comps and footage, and this is gonna kind of be an array. And just for a naming guide, an index zero is gonna be all of our comps and an index one of this array is gonna be all of our footage. So anytime we wanna call it, in the end, if we wanted to say comps and footage, if we wanted to grab our comp names, we would just do that. If we wanted to grab our footage names, we're just gonna do that. So what we're gonna now do is create a function to go into all these projects and get the comps and footage. So might as well create a function called get comps and footage. And we're gonna give it our projects because it needs to know to open those up and whatnot. And then down below, we'll go ahead and define this function, get comps and footage. And we're gonna need our project array here, which we can just give it a different name since this is gonna be a global variable and we don't wanna have any issues with that. And now, like I said, we need to loop through and each time through the loop for each project, we need to open it up in After Effects. So we're gonna create a for loop. Same as before with var i is equal to zero, the beginning of our project index array. And uh, we'll say for i is less than our project array dot length, increment i by one. Now to open up the projects, we just need to say app dot open and the file, we need to give it a file object, but since we have an array of these file objects, it's perfect. We can just give it project array i and this will open up each project as it reaches it in the for loop. Another thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to suppress the dialogues. When you open up a project, occasionally you'll have pop-up windows. Perhaps you're missing a font, perhaps there's missing items or broken expressions. You'll get pop-up messages which will prevent everything from loading until you click on OK. So what we can do is add a begin and end suppress dialogues method, and this will suppress all incoming error messages and allow us to easily flow through without any issues. So before we open up the project, we're gonna say app.begin suppress dialogues. And at the end, we're gonna say app.end suppress dialogues. And we're gonna pass the argument false because we do not want the error messages to appear after we're done. If you put true, it will then display everything once it reaches this point. So now inside of this for loop, after we've suppressed our dialogues, what we need to do is now loop through the project and all the items. So create a second for loop within it, starting with var e is equal to one, and for e is less than or equal to our app.project.numItems increment e by one. And then we're gonna have two simple checks. The first check is gonna check if the item we're looking at is a composition. To do that, we'll say if app.project.item e is an instance of a comp item, then that's a composition. And we're gonna later wanna store that. The other case is if it's a footage item. But instead of just being able to say is an instance of, say, a footage item, what we're gonna do is check if it has a file. If the source has a file in our system, then we know it's a piece of footage that was imported and can be found locally on our computer. 
So I'm going to say if app.project.itemE.file is valid, this means that it has a file, then we know this is footage. And actually what I should do with my suppressed dialogs, now that I think about it, should go before uh, the for loop, and the end should go after everything. And then now that we have our checks to see if this is a composition and to see if this is a file, what we're going to do is create two variables, one called our comp names and another called our footage names. And again, we're going to be storing the names of both of these types of items because we can't just store the objects. Um, we can only contain an item in the project panel as long as that project is open. So once we load up the next project, those become invalid. So that's the reason we're grabbing the names. So if we find a composition, we're going to say comp names dot push app dot project dot item e dot name. And then same thing if we find a piece of footage, we'll take our footage names and push the name of our item. Then lastly, we need to return the two values. And remember, we have this set up to be an array. In the first index is our composition names, and in the second is our footage names. So I'm going to say return and an array. The first index will be comp names, and the second footage names. So now everything should be working unless I've made some kind of mistake. So what I'm going to do is first grab alert our comps and footage, the comps, and then alert our footage. And then now we have all of our AEP folders. This might be a lot more uh, projects to open up. So let's just run it. And you can see it's opening projects, even with all these missing items that are appearing, no problem. And it looks like we're getting an error here uh, with one of our items. So just to troubleshoot this real quick, what I'm going to do is write line I and see to what item it gets to. And I want to see if I can also get the name of the item. That way we know which thing's causing us to trip up here. All right, so now if we go ahead and try and run it again, we can see how far we get before everything fails. So it looks like once it gets to the fifth item, it's coming across some issues. So if I head into my project folder here and sort everything alphabetically so we see the same order After Effects is using, we get to one, we get zero, we got index zero, one, two, three, four, five, which is having an issue here with our black body testing project. And I actually know why this is issue is erroring. It's because this project is uh, has an error in it. Uh, I had to create an entirely new project with it because it had some uh, effect problems. So let's go ahead and try it again without that file and see if we get even further. You can see we're making it past index 5 this time. And one issue I appear to be having is every time I get to a new project, it seems to be asking me to save it. And every time I have to say no, and it seems like it's going to be going through all the projects doing this, which is a bit of a problem. So the way we're going to get around this uh, unforeseen issue that was before this tutorial was not a problem is we're going to uh, make sure we close and not open the project uh, without saving. So we can type in do dot not, I believe, or do not. We need to find the code that says do not save the project. So if we head over to the application object maybe. It looks like we might be able to use the app.project.close which creates a new project but clean and doesn't ask us to save. So after we've opened up a project and we've gone through there, after we're done looping through the items, we're going to want to close it without saving the changes and make sure this is all accurate here. So let's go ahead and run it and see how it works. And now, fingers crossed, it seems like we're not getting those save errors, which is good. Um, by saying app.project.close, close options do not save the changes, it seems to be going through, not giving us any error messages, and not asking us to save any of the projects. 
it is maybe possible that as we were looping through all these projects that uh, that was somehow making a change in the memory and that prompts After Effects to say, hey, maybe you should save this project because we've detected something has changed. So while this is loading, I'm just gonna check how many projects total we're looking at. It looks like 45 in total. So we should be just about finished here, assuming we don't get any more issues. And now we're gonna get our massive list of all of the compositions and all the footage items it's found within these 45 different projects. And all we have to do is click one button to initiate everything. So we're looking at um, the names of all of our compositions here, starting with comp one, a bunch of uh, style presets, animations, all these type of things from all the projects we looked at. And then we can also see a full list of all of our footage. So what it would be the use case of something like this? Well, let's say you have some old project files that you need to bring back up and they're somewhere deep in an archive, somewhere deep in some project files. You don't know what the names are. Maybe you didn't do so good at naming your After Effects projects while doing work. You could use something like this if you know what the footage is called, if you know what the, the composition is called, this would allow you to easily find out which project uh, everything is located in. And even if you wanted to go the extra mile, this would be able to index all the items within your project and basically give you a full list of this is where the footage is located or this is where this composition or effect is found. But that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, hit subscribe and the bell icon down below. And of course, down in the description in the GitHub link, you can get the code uh, to replicate this yourself. And it will be using the updated uh, do not save changes we added. And down in the description as well, you can also check out the link to follow me on Instagram and get notified of when the videos are live on there. And you can also follow us on the new Discord where we have 75 members currently talking about scripting, extensions, plugins, and expressions. And down in the description, you can also donate to the three crypto addresses listed for basic attention token, Ethereum, or Bitcoin. But that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you guys next time.